Hello and welcome to another video by ReedsPro.com and this is one channel where you'd get plenty of information on REITs and INVITs in India and we are the first and the only channel dedicated to REIT and INVIT investing in India. So the topic today that we take up is repayment of capital and we take up this topic because a lot of uh, the investors today have a query that what will happen to the value of my units because the REITs and units seem to be constantly paying back capital in the form of amortization loans of loans or capital reduction or repayment of capital, whatever name called. So will it make my REIT and invit units finally nil? So that's what we'll try to answer. And our fears are also a lot of times accentuated by the fact we get a we, we get to look at a chart like this where there's a distribution build up and there is a capital deduction one in yellow. So we say, okay, the, the value of our units is decreasing day by day. So is this a good asset to hold? Before I go on further, let me just introduce myself. I'm Gaurav Jain and you can get hold of these books of mine on readspro.com website. And you will have let, lots of information, books, blogs, etc. on the channel. In fact, we are the first and only dedicated read and enrich channel of India. So uh, let's coming, come on to our basic query on the capital repayment front. So if you have uh, got advice, the distribution advice from the reads and enrich, they look something like this. So you'll have a capital repayment column where you would have the amount shown that this is the kind of... Uh, money that is being paid to you as a capital repayment. Similarly, say a Brookfield would give you a repayment of shareholder loan by SPV, something like this. So what is going to happen is my REIT and INVIT unit value going to become zero. That's what everybody has in mind. This is a theoretical answer. The yes is a theoretical answer. The practical answer is the nature of the assets and the need to follow nomenclature is not there. So the, it's a nomenclature because there is a certain structure that the REIT and INVIT takes up because it has to distribute the dividends in a tax efficient manner and make the cash flows pass up to the unit holder. So that's the why the nomenclature is there. I will explain a little more on that briefly later on, but we've already made plenty of videos on that. But it's not exactly also like capital reduction or share back or buyback of normal companies. This again, one has to remember before going on further. So the first thing that one has to understand is the asset life. So the asset life can be either finite or perpetual. So in case of 30 or 50 years of asset life, that is by effect, by way of valuations, could be defined as perpetual only. And the finite is the one which has say 10, 15, 20 years or something of life, or uh, the concession period goes away, or the asset has to be returned or something like that would happen. So in case of finite and perpetual, there'll be a difference in how we see the asset or the units of our REITs and invits. So why is this classification of a perpetual or finite asset important? Let's just understand that with a very, very simplistic example, suppose you have a villa where you reside on the ground floor. Now, over a period of time living there, you decide that, okay, I would like some rental income. Let me make a first floor on the same house. So you spend for an approximation for just an idea, you say, okay, I need to spend 10 lakh rupees on constructing the first floor of this house because I already have the land. Now, suppose this 10 lakh rupees fetches you 2 lakh rupees a year. So in five years, your rentals would pay back your capital, right? However, would you lose that asset that you have? Would you lose that first floor that you have? No, you would still own it and you would still keep getting money from it. So that's a very simple way to understand that the right on the asset is what will define how it's going to pay you in the future and whether the value has gone down or not, how it is in case of REITs and invits in India. So let's say the asset life for a REIT is mostly perpetual because they have commercial assets which they hold and REITs, uh, yeah. apart from that, there are invits and there it will depend on how the concessionaire agreement or some other agreement is structured. The finite asset life then now can again be classified into two things, two parts. One is a finite portfolio and the second one is a growing portfolio. By a finite portfolio, we mean that we have say five or seven assets or something, and they have an asset life of 10, 15 years. And after that, the portfolio is going to deplete totally. 
Whereas a growing portfolio, you would add assets. Now, how can you add assets in case of an invit? You can acquire assets by loans or by equity raise. Both these ways you can acquire assets. And again, reiterating a point here that REITs and invits have an undivided claim on all assets. We'll see this in more depth when we take up an example here. And let's take the example of IRB invit. It's a public invit. And if you see, it has road assets on in its portfolio where they talk about a weighted average life of assets in the portfolio for 16 years. That's the average life. Now, if you look at the 2018-19 annual report, they talked about 17 years of life in seven operational assets. So how does that happen? So we've come five years hence, we still talk about 16 years of uh, the remaining life of assets. How does that happen? So if you see, they have uh, now six highway assets, five BOT and one ham. Earlier, they had only BOT assets. So out of the seven BOT assets, two, the sixth one and the seventh one are not there with them now. And they have added a ham project, Varodra Kim ham project in 2022. So that's how now they have a different concession period. And this is the on the left hand side table is what the concession periods are. And if to uh, buttress that point, you have these eight assets listed here according to the latest Q3 24 reports and the six and seven points the sixth and the seventh assets, the revenue is not there. So if you see a chart again like this, this is true. But what we've seen is also true that the average life of the assets has increased. And this has resulted in IRB Invit becoming an ongoing entity, whether it was 16 years earlier, now 17 years earlier, now it's become seven, 16 years. So it could keep happening the same way. Again, this is possible because equity or debt is infused, but the undivided claim on all assets is there for all the unit holders. That's why you can have an invit as a going entity and you really don't need to be bothered about uh, how the repayment is happening because that repayment happens because of a certain reason. The how, why that repayment happens in case of in which as far as uh, loan repayment or reduction in capital is there is because of a technical reason. The technical reason for that is that they have in REITs as well as in which it's a lot to do with the tax efficiency and how to pass on the maximum cash flows to the unit holder holders. That's the important point because the both the company law and SEBI regulations have to be taken into account. And that is why the distributions are divided into interest, dividend and repayment of capital. Very shortly, though we've summarized it in earlier parts, if you are a unit holder of a REIT or invit and that holds properties in a SPV, the SPV below the REIT has properties which it holds, then your money as a unit holder which you've pumped into the REIT, you've infused to the REIT, the REIT can either give the give it as an equity to the SPV or by way of debt to the SPV. So if it gives by way of equity, the dividends will flow on that part. Before that, the debt which is infused, the interest will have to be paid. According to that, the nomenclature will have to be done. So what's the takeaway here? The takeaway is simply that Indian REITs would give payouts, simply all distributions equal to dividends. Let's take it like that. For the taxation part, you split it up into repayment of debt, interest and dividend. And accordingly, the taxations would be calculated. Detailed understanding on the taxation, consult your taxation advisor and refer to the FAQs of PG Invit website. They have very good uh, explanation of how to calculate your taxes. and also, as a summary, we're just listing it here, is that the interest part is taxable, dividend is tax-free if non-concessional taxation regime is there at the SPV level, and the repayment of debt, as clarified in the 223 budget, has a limited impact because it is a deferred tax liability. So do consult your tax advisor and uh, before filing your returns on REITs and invits.
Thank you so much to like, subscribe and comment to us, to visit our website and connect with us. Thank you so much.